Hey guys, uh, today is uh, April 20th, 2019 and this update is going to be somewhere along the lines. Few questions. First question is what new TIs ask me, why me? Why they picked me? And sorry about the background noise and everything, no editing equipment. So, but information is the most important thing. But guys, really to answer you that question, why me? I really need to represent, present you with my theory of uh, Cluster B personalities, psychopaths, narcissists, borderlines and how these clusters, because I'm gonna explain you through the clusters, they don't operate alone of course, uh, create guest lighted uh, mentality en masse, which is uh, just another fancy name for schizophrenia. And schizophrenia comes in many forms. There is also this wide form of socially acceptable schizophrenia when uh, whole groups of people uh, really whole nations with a whole heart believe in the bullshit uh, they've been uh, presented with so first things first you guys need to understand uh, what are the psychopaths narcissists and borderlines in order to navigate through this uh, map called life so first things first psychopaths Psychopaths uh, don't have really feelings, don't feel even fear. They have feelings of anger, of lust, of envy. And what Sam Vankin said, uh, Google uh, Richard, the Spartan coach, excellent guy for understanding the topic. What he said that mind of a psychopath is like a haunted house full of voices telling him what to do. And... Uh, Another thing is what he said is I need to destroy like a big unit of energy to get a small unit of energy. So, and this is the thing very common with psychopaths and narcissists. From the moment they wake up in the morning, they feel this incredible thirst, thirst for your energy because they are soulless. They do not have a source of their own but they are simply the vessels of the metaphysical evil. So another thing is to explain you the minds. So again, I'll use <clears throat> Freud. So Freud explained human ego as you have a super ego, then you have an ego, then you have an id. So super ego is moralizing, it's judging, it's telling you what should be done. Stop smoking, it's good for you, okay? But id, Emotions, subconscious, likes to smoke, right? It's impulsive. And uh, you as an ego, you have to negotiate between those two things. That's how it goes with the normal people. Well, with psychopaths, narcissists, they have only super ego, they have impulses, and they have instant gratification. Thing is, that super ego, which is leading them to do things, is not stupid at all <laughs> it's very fucking evil and very fucking intelligent so if you believe in uh, metaphysical evil if you believe in god you got to believe in devil okay uh, then you can understand that they are just extension of the higher demonic hierarchy but if you're not religious then just take the technical data what i told you and you're all you're you're, you're good to go Okay, now I'm in the town of Hegerheide, where I'm gonna be doing my shopping. It's a beautiful town. Uh, narcissists, unlike psychopaths, they do care what you think. Psychopath doesn't give a shit what you think. Narcissist, yes. Narcissist has to maintain, create and maintain this false persona and he's pulling people into this uh, image. Oh, by the way, uh, then the lions, right? You can eat those. It was yesterday my meal and today. But um, psychopath creates this false persona and uh, and pulling people into that game. So psychopaths gonna typically have, so, sorry, narcissists gonna typically have flying monkeys or lieutenants. And if you're not easily manipulated, now TIs should start 
understanding where I'm going, uh, you're gonna be picked up as a scapegoat. A scapegoat is somebody uh, picked up as a target and the whole community evolving around psychopath or narcissist gonna start projecting all their negativities to the say, scapegoat. For example, when I lived in Cambodia, I would hear a Khmer in front of my doors while drinking. Coca! Drink beer, cow! Like lady! Stuff like that. Army! Projecting their imaginations. What this white guy in the house should be doing there or what he should be. So, now borderlines. Borderline is uh, borderline narcissist is what somebody said. Same uh, symptoms for the man would be narcissist, and same symptoms for the woman would be borderline. So borderline is just a fancy name for a weaker type of a narcissist. I think I'm gonna cross the road. I hope this nice middle-class people gonna not gonna feel offended that I'm walking and talking so close to their nice homes. So borderline, just to explain you through the example, um, will be something like this. Uh, let's say somebody born as a prince, as a narcissist, would get his narcissistic supply, the energy, through the adoration. Oh, you're a prince, you gotta be very holy, you gotta have very good karma to be prince or a king. In Thailand, uh, kings and princes are considered to be deities because you can only be prince born like that if you have like awesome karma. That's what I learned in the monastery, it was re constantly repeated. And um, so somebody born as a rich would get his supply through the power of the family and uh, status, but somebody born as a poor and ugly could only get his supply by complaining and playing a victim, while in the same time these people have strong tendencies of forming families because once they have children, they can physically abuse their children and gaslight them. You know what my mother used to tell me. All mothers are beating their child. You're the only one who's talking about this. Don't talk about this. Other kids also get beaten, they don't talk about this. So this is how it goes. And then next day, I never, I, I was never beating you. You're lying, you're inventing things. So this is called gaslighting. So now I'm, I'm coming somewhere. So in this society, I'll give you like few examples. Like now it's perfectly normal to be pederasta, to be trans, you know, Today I'm a 44-year-old heterosexual fat Eastern European. Tomorrow I can identify myself as a trans-age uh, dashiki girl from northern Nigeria uh, or maybe unicorn. It's all normal. See? Um, <laughs> if you go along with the program, you then uh, suffer from the mild schizophrenia and but you're socially acceptable, uh, basically flying monkey. Of the psychopathic system or let's go back in the 1930s and 40s where dictatorial states in Europe been uh, picking up on mass scapegoats in Russia those being like rich peasants in Nazi Germany communists and Jews and then later on Slavs etc so if you, if you were going on with the program, you would be like good socialist citizen of Soviet Union or good national socialist of the Germany, etc. If not, concentration camp. So this is how these uh, psychopathic societies work. So now let's go back to that question. My favorite question. <laughs> I'll, I'll go somewhere in the shade. My favorite question is, why me? So, oh, I'm also gonna film a town a little bit. Beautiful church there, done all in brick. So why me? So it's very simple. If you start waking up from that bullshit and you start seeing it as a mind controlling bullshit, or if you're about to start waking up from that bullshit, uh, then 
Allah Akbar. And then, uh, or uh, if you, uh, or you know, typical thing, typical uh, type of um, controlling uh, people with potential is to pair them, metaphysically pair them with the psychopaths and narcissists. Typically, that's happening for the women. They ending up in relationship with um, psychopaths from the police force, army, secret service. And then once they're like enough of this psychopathic bullshit, then targeting starts because it was all you know. Targeting has two phases: uh, covert and overt. In co covert phase, can can run from the moment you you got born till the moment you start noticing targeting. And overt is when when it's kind of like getting very typical when people stare at you, talking what you're thinking, talking details about your life, bank account, and etc. 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 So. <clears throat> Now let me uh, wrap it up for you. Um, TIs are the people who are simply escaping that zone of being a schizophrenic, uh, socially acceptable schizophrenics and uh, mind control. When I say socially acceptable schizophrenics, because socially acceptable schizophrenic is somebody who works eight hours per day, drinks a couple of beers every day, watches uh, what's going on on you know TV shows and, and football, and that that nonsense and um, it's you know it's a perfect perfect uh, controllable unit uh, with um, no objection to the authorities somebody somebody you know consuming fluoride uh, consuming um, getting his kids uh, vaccinated etc 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 the moment you start saying no you know what i don't want my kid to be an autist i don't want my kid to be like licking ice cream like like that you know every 20 30 <laughs> one in every 20 30 kids now is like idiot sorry autistic special which means moron again sorry you know if i'm offending you but that's what it is and if you say no to that nonsense you know what i don't want to put my kid through that you know um, assembly line of fucking needles then you're getting on the list so basically you are ending up being as a targeted individual the moment when you start to be mentally healthy but because you're dealing with essentially psychopathic mind you know metaphysical evil is a psychopath and its extensions are psychopaths then that metaphysical evil of course gonna use the the all the instruments that we know like a smearing a campaign Mm, a blacklisting what's next uh, gang stalking um, what's after that um, um, direct energy attacks um, astral dreamscape manipulation um, you know list goes on and on and on I'm sure you guys who are in, in that game you know what's going on and um, then it's gonna start to hit you and then as I said before that evil gonna start accusing you of uh, being uh, crazy and this is why it's very important to understand these people and to understand, for example, what is the gaslighting, what is emotional baiting. So I know that most of you who are watching this know these things, but I really always feel that there are always new people coming to this blog and, and they can pick up this information. So gaslighting is when a psychopath is making you crazy. So, for example, gaslighting from that famous movie, Gaslighting 1944 with Ingmar Bergman, worth to be watched it's actually a very good movie and you can find the earlier version of that uh, topic it's one british movie from the 1930s this one is on the youtube i forgot to, yeah guest lighting same name so guest lighting is uh, when a psychopath uh, start playing mind games and i really need to i, I really need to uh, say this immediately when you're dealing with psychopath and you are non-psychopath you, you you don't understand that you're dealing with somebody who's competing with you who's like targeting you you think that you are just dealing with a spouse or co-worker or whatever you don't understand that other person is specifically looking how to damage you never forget psychopath narcissism destroy that much of energy to get that much that much to get that much this is how they operate so um, it will for example hide something some picture then claim that you lost it misplace some item claim that you've been clumsy again accuse you of some mistake at work which you didn't do and that person gonna be very convincing very emotional and then you're gonna start doubting your own mind because why would anybody 
you know, invent these things. Because what is the major, major obstacle for us is uh, us, uh, empaths, healthy types, non-psychopathic types, uh, awakening from the um, group amnesia called social acceptable schizophrenia. Yes, comrade, our socialist society is the best in the world. I grew up in this kind of bullshit. So, th this is the game. Uh, if, if you're a healthy guy, you can't even conceive the idea that somebody is doing these things uh, deliberately. And, but you now you need to re-educate yourself to understand that there are different types of people who simply don't have compassion, who have these evil impulses, uh, evil intelligent impulses, and who really need to destroy you and take your energy. Another another thing was, now I'm like kind of losing my track, 15 minutes, 16 minutes of a straight monologue, guest lighting, and what was the other thing? Um, uh, I forgot. Guest lighting and... Um, Yeah. So, um, I hope that I answered most of your questions and uh, kind of uh, set up a map how all this is working. And uh, emotional baiting, right? So, yeah, oh, I had a shit lot of emotional baiting at the work. And I was not called for the work a couple of days, so that means, uh, you know, if they can't, if they can't get you through the provoking you, don't worry. Evil holds the whole higher ground. It controls the factories. It controls the governments. It owns this planet. So don't worry. They will fuck you up anyway. But if you allow yourself to be emotionally baited, you're gonna be screwed uh, much earlier on. So basically, emotional baiting is. Uh, Typical example is uh, narcissist psychopath gonna start pushing your button privately or among other people, and then you're gonna say something in public, and then <coughs> you're gonna get fired. Mara and Marina, example from Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth II, 2005. So two workers, Mara from Romania and Marina from Croatia. So Marina was a typical micromanagement uh, type of guy, uh, class B personality. I was working as a photographer. If I were folding pictures, one, fi you know, 15,000 pictures, one picture by another, she would tell me to overlap them for like one centimeter. Or next day, if I would overlap them, she would say spread out and so on. So she was like all the way pushing buttons. And uh, uh, and then uh, Mara at one moment said in a in a gallery fuck, which you're not allowed to say, and uh, she was fired next day. And that's how it goes. So that this is the example. So you when something like this is happening, that's what I say. You must have a map in your mind. You must know what's going on. You must constantly know. Okay, he's now pushing my buttons. He's doing emotional baiting. Purpose is, you know, to put me in that situation, to be labeled and and fired. Uh, if you know these things, then it's of course your second nature to walk on the eggshells and jump through the hoops. But if if you're new, then you think that uh, with the aggression you're gonna defend yourself uh, or etc. No, it's not gonna. It's not gonna happen. So with this, uh, I'm simply gonna finish the eyes. Be aware of the uh, emotional games, of the framing games. Uh, be very aware of the, what I call Mr. Smiley. Just another type of the game when a psychopath sends one of his flying monkeys to tell you what people are talking about you to get your reaction. Be very careful what are you telling to that person. The best thing is just uh, knock your head and say that you got the message and that you have absolutely nothing else to say because of course absolutely everything negative you say is gonna be multiplied by 1000 times and twisted and you know the game. It's a losing game for you anyway but um, by knowing this uh, 
uh, by knowing these instruments, by knowing these things, uh, you can. <coughs> excuse me, you can. <coughs> Ooh, so many of them. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can at least uh, minimize the whole thing. You know, we feed on plants. They feed on us. Speaking in metaphor about reptiles and psychopaths as well. That's the way how food chain works. I know that we are supposed to be stupid cattle, which doesn't understand what's going on. You know, what a nice world. People are so nice. Oh, look at this beautiful building. Oh, it's so beautiful. Such a beautiful town. It's got to be populated with very beautiful and good people, yeah? Well, you know better than that. Everything is deceiving. Once more, thanks for watching and uh, I hope uh, I'm gonna keep my job for at least uh, till the first paycheck. But who knows? Bye-bye.